Seahawks, Browns. Browns lay an egg. Seahawks coming off, you know, extra rest because of that Thursday night game where they were fortunate as well to beat the Rams. I mean, there, there was one of those games where they controlled it. They lost control. They controlled it again. Then you went, oh, my gosh, they're still going to lose. And they got lucky with the missed field goal. Um, how do you see this one playing out, Mike? Uh, just so I, Seahawks are favored by one and a half points over under at 46. If the Browns are so inconsistent, it's always risky to pick against them because this may be the week that it all falls together. But I think there are some flaws in that offense that are being exposed one week at a time. Pete Carroll and the Seahawks defense are good enough to take advantage of that. Baker Mayfield gets hurried. He escapes the pocket, I think, too late. He's throwing off of his back foot too often. He's locking onto Odell Beckham Jr. for too long when Beckham is taken away. Beckham's frustration is starting to affect the offense. I think there's just too many factors lying up against the Browns and this is not the team you want to be facing when you're trying to get right after the long flight home from LA or from San Francisco close enough cross country and you've got that factor of short week for the Browns yeah long week for the Seahawks and I think the Seahawks keep pushing forward they won in Pittsburgh earlier this year and they complete the AFC North road sweep by going to Cleveland and beating the Browns I've got it 24 20 Seahawks one and a half point favorite so I've got them covering as well uh, we'll see whether or not that's one of the best bets. I've been on the Seahawks the past few weeks, but they burned me last week by a half point, so maybe not this week. But I think the Seahawks more than a point and a half better than the Browns. Yeah, I, I mean, I look at a, a – you said a lot of good things there. I mean, the Seahawks going across the country playing that 1 o'clock time zone thing, I don't think it matters to them. Pete Carroll always seems to have that team ready to go no matter what time zone they're in. Um, there's a few things, I think, that concern me a little bit in the matchup. I do think the Browns, of course, will put up a better showing – um, but I think this is what concerns me uh, more than anything. The Browns, their run defense, we saw some issues there. Well, the Seahawks are one of the better running teams in football. They're going to continue to be patient with the run game. And, you know, then on the outside, they're an aggressive throwing football team that way with Russell Wilson and DK Metcalf and Moore and Lockett. Sneaky good receivers up there in Seattle right now. Not the most creative offense, but they will attack your secondary deep out outside the numbers, wherever it is. They make you defend the field, of course, with Russell Wilson scrambling so big, too. Other thing, I just go, when I flip around to the other side, you know, I worry about the Browns. I don't think they're going to be able to run against the Seattle Seahawks defense, which is phenomenal against the run. You can throw against the Seahawks, Mike. Like, those one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside certainly favor the Cleveland Browns. But can the Cleveland Browns pass protect – against an, uh, you know, an oncoming pass rush that's finding its way. Jadeveon Clowney, you know, I think he's starting to show up more and more because he's finally gotten into shape. He didn't do anything all training camp. we got to remember that. So he's really just rounded into form. Same with Ezekiel Anza. Same thing for him where, you know, last week he popped up watching the game too. I think he'll only get better. So I worry about that with the Browns. I think the Browns put up a spirited effort, but I'm going like with you, Seahawks 24-20. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. We saw Jared Goff last Thursday night play very well against yes, we the Seahawks did. defense. Right. And a lot of it was quick decisions, quick throws, wide open guys. And, and some of that has to be scheming by Sean McVay to make guys open underneath. Right. right? How much of that can Freddie Kitchens take and sit down with Baker Mayfield on a short week? When you've got a five-day turnaround by the time you get home on Tuesday, how much of that can you, can you feed to Baker Mayfield and say, this is the kind of thing we need to do? Quick decisions. Get the ball out. Let's come up with some plays where guys are open underneath. You talk all the time about coming up with ways to get easy completions yeah. for a quarterback to get him rolling. Right. I don't see the Browns doing that. No. Is I... Freddie Kitchens wise to consider something like that for Sunday against the Seahawks? Yeah, well, I, I do think he's wise. Now, there, there's an inventory of plays you can always run against that Seattle defense you hear me say it because it's so all over the NFL. There's there's like there's literally a phrase in the NFL. Where was it Monday night? Where was it Monday night against the Seattle defense? Yeah, well, you know what? They never really got to get into it. You know, they never got to really play their game just because they got down so quickly and then Baker Mayfield struggled. They never got to stay really consistent with the run game and I don't think they ever really got to get into a flow of the football game. But whether they have those Seattle beaters, yes, Mike, I don't know if they do. That's a big question, certainly. They're going to need them but the biggest thing, and more than anything, with Baker Mayfield being a little off of his game as of late, not throwing the ball 
great, not great in the pocket as far as pocket presence, where to move, seeing lanes, seeing people. Um, I just think the biggest thing the Browns need to get get to and stay with is Baker Mayfield under center, running the ball. What made him so successful at the end of last year was them running the ball and then doing play-action pass where he got to set up deep behind the line of scrimmage, where the pass rush wasn't as, a, as effective as far as getting into his vision and being around him because of the play-action pass. Those are the things they can do to stress out that Seattle defense, and that was a big part of what the Rams did to Seattle last week too. They play that three-deep zone Seattle. So when you play in three-deep zone and you run the ball, those linebackers come up to do their run fakes, and then they got to drop back into their zone coverages. Well, if you stay with the run and have those run fakes, that's when you can get Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham Jr. Like we saw last week, it was you know Gerald Everett and Cooper Cup who got behind those linebackers off of the play-action pass fake. We'll see how effective they can be doing it. Uh, but either way, we both like the Seahawks to win that game uh, on the road. Let me, let me ask you one more question. Yeah, sure. Because I think this is one of the bigger games of the week, so I think we can spend a little more time yeah, on this. Cool. Do we think that Baker Mayfield's development has been affected by the fact that the guy who was so responsible for getting the most out of Baker Mayfield last year, Freddie Kitchens, is now responsible for the whole team and maybe not able to work with Mayfield as much as he did last year? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I think there's probably some truths to that. I do. Also, you know, I, I do think, you know, Freddie Kitchens needs to stay strong to his convictions and what he believes on the offensive side of the ball, too. You know, I do think they've gotten into a little bit of uh, – and I don't know this. This is total speculation. This is just off my film study of – uh, him curtailing the offense a little bit to maybe what Baker Mayfield likes too much. And, you know, hey, I understand you got to do that to a degree, but this is a team that's not built and can't withstand, like, being in the shotgun and throwing the ball 35 to 40 times a game and doing that stuff. So Baker Mayfield's going to have to adjust his game a little bit to what's best for the team overall. And I think that's one issue they're a little bit in between on in the games I've seen. It's, oh, it's shotgun, but, man, we want to get in the power run. But Baker likes the shotgun and he can get the ball out and do things like that yeah but they can't pass protect that well and I still think the offensive passing game is finding its way where the run game I have more confidence in and I really think could have had some success last week if uh, the game just didn't get out of hand one last thing to watch in that game yeah Baker Mayfield looks a little puffy this year doesn't he and I just wondered, is it affecting his mobility? Is he maybe tired in the second half? Because he, he may, you know, and there's that, that, that balance. You put on weight so yeah. you can withstand the hits right. versus you go lean so you can run away from the hits. And he just looks a little puffier this year than last year. I, I agree. He does look thicker. There's no question about it. And is it affecting his mobility? Maybe to a degree. I don't think where it's really affecting him in my eyes is just the the pop with his feet and the pop with his arm in the pocket. You know, everything does seem a hair sluggish or elongated this year to me to a degree. And I think that's why we've seen like Odell Beckham Jr. on a 20-yard out route early on in that 49er game where the ball goes, you know, five feet over his head to where Odell can barely get a finger on it in time. So there is some issues there with, with uh, Baker. Certainly not playing his best football. And uh, if you're a Browns fan, you're hoping that kind of rounds into form because they're going to need it. And and uh, some of the things I was concerned about him coming out in the draft are rearing its ugly head. You know, the first guy's not open, panicking in the pocket and leaving. Or the pocket collapsing and then just getting out of the pocket for no reason where, no, just step up. There's there's little lanes like Brady, like we talk about so much, to step up and find a cozy place to throw the football. Uh, that is concerning to me right now with Baker Mayfield. And uh, you're right, that's one of the games of the week. I'm excited to see that. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.